So Mendel started making pea babies, and before he did anything, he established what he called true breeding lines of plants. His true breeding plants for a certain characteristic, um, all parents, mm, parents, no, maybe I, meh, meh, all offspring always look like the parents for the given trait forever. Doesn't matter how many times you cross plants they always look the same. So a true breeding line of, let's say, um, yellow seeded plants. That means that in this line, you take a seed, it's a yellow seed, you plant it, you grow a plant that makes yellow seeds. You cross it with another plant that makes yellow seeds and you get yellow seeds. Forever, every time you take yellow seeded plants from this line and cross them with each other, you always get yellow seeded babies. No variation. What I can tell you is that these true breeding plants, I don't know that Mendel, well, I do know, he didn't know this, but we know that in order to have true breeding plants, you have to have, you have to be homozygous for the trait. That's the only way you can be true breeding. This is super interesting. And we'll see why that is, but that's what he started with. So we know that when he started doing his crosses, he had um, peas that always resulted in the same babies. Everybody looked the same forever. They were true breeding. Okay, so here's what he did. He started out, he said, okay, I'm gonna have a parent generation. And he picked one of his traits. And for example, I'm gonna show you a picture in a second of a purple flower. We could use, per we could use the flower gene. So he has a purple flowered plant and he crossed it with a white flowered plant. It's one gene, two alleles, two possible alleles. So he found a true breeding line of purple plants and a true breeding line of white plants, flowered plants and then he crossed them. And what he found is in the next generation, which he called the F1 generation, he found they were all purple flowered. That was 100%. 100% of the babies had purple flowers. He was like, where'd the white flowers go? They disappeared. But then he was like, hmm, I wonder what happened. He did an F2. He created an F2 generation. And here's how he did it. He took F1. Okay, wait, where do I put this? He took purple flowered plants and he crossed them with each other. So he took the babies from the F1 generation, all like he made so many purple flowered babies that weren't that true breeding line. This is the F1 line of purple babies. He grabbed two of them and he's like, hmm, you guys make babies and prosper. And he called their babies the F2 generation. And what he found is that most of the babies were purple. 
but some of them were white. And not only were most purple and some of them white, but almost to the number, 75% of them were purple and 25% of them were white. Okay, so now he's going, not only did the trait come back, but it doesn't seem like the trait came back randomly. Like it seems like it might have come back um, in like a pattern, like in, in predictable, in a predict at a predictable rate. So he's like, what's going on? And I'll tell you right now, you already know. You could probably figure it out. And I'll just give you a little hint. Think about meiosis. And then I will be back and we will look at what's actually happening with, like, how did we end up with these results?